Good morning and welcome to the retirement ceremony in honor of Lieutenant General John A. Jensen. Our host for today's ceremony is the Chief of Staff of the Army, General Randy A. George. Please stand for the singing of the national anthem by Sergeant First Class Heath Sorensen and the invocation delivered by Chaplain Colonel Buddy Wynn. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave O'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. The prophet Jeremiah writes, For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare, not for harm, to give you a future with hope. Please join me with prayer as we ask for God's blessing upon this special occasion. Almighty and merciful God, the giver of all good gifts, we thank you today for Lieutenant General Jensen and for his more than four decades of leadership and selfless service to our nation and Army. You endowed Lieutenant General Jensen with character and faith, a mighty intellect, and with leaders and mentors who forged the leader that stands with us today. You also blessed him with the true Army family to share in the rewards of this life. So we thank you for Cindy and publicly recognize her faithfulness and unwavering support to her husband, her family, our Army, and our nation. Thank you for the many other family members, friends, and teammates gathered here to celebrate and honor this great American. As General and Mrs. Jensen transition from active military service to our great nation and step into the next chapter of their journey together, I pray that you continue to guide them along the path which leads to fullness of life that only you can provide. As I think about the friendship that I've enjoyed with this wonderful couple, I'm filled with gratitude. I thank you for the privilege for serving a fantastic teammate, especially amid the challenges of the last several years. Lord of everlasting truth and grace, thank you for pouring down your blessings on your people. Continue to bless and empower our nation's and army's people as they prepare for war. May the lamp of liberty shine bright and be a beacon of hope and a model of freedom for people around the globe. Preserve our liberties and help us to be people of honor and character now and always. In your holy and matchless name, amen. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, General George. Okay, good morning, everyone. We got off to a, as a lifelong Chicago Bears fan, we got off to a really rough, really rough start here. Um, but it's great to, great to see everybody today. I know we got a bunch of folks in. I would like uh, our tags or our former tags, if you could just stand up. Just want to recognize all those folks. I think and just to get started, and we'll talk a little bit here um, about John, but have uh, anybody who's spent a little bit of time um, in the Army, especially at this level, uh, has an appreciation for all that our tags do out there and some really dynamic 
um, tough time. So I just want to thank you all for, for what you're doing. And I told John Stubbs, um, it's a good opportunity. I might have to have like a TAA meeting or something when, now, now that I got everybody uh, together. But it's great uh, to be here this morning. And uh, this is really a celebration of, of a great warrior and a great teammate that we've had over, over many decades. So we got some special visitors here. Um, the ambassador from Croatia, sir, great to have you here. If you haven't been to beaches in Croatia, I'm gonna ask General Grass to stand up, our former National Guard Bureau. We got the vice, I would also mention, who is from Iowa and started, and, and unfortunately, I won't repeat that, but, um, and served in the Iowa. I think his first assignment as a soldier was in the Iowa National Guard. The DAS, unfortunately, has not been in the Iowa National Guard, but she's up here joining us. Um, we have our, uh, our teammates from Kosovo. I'm gonna ask uh, um, General, if I could have you and your Sergeant Major stand up. State partners from Iowa. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask Roger Schultz to stand up, former director of the Army National Guard. Um, all right, you sat, you sat down too quick, uh, Roger. Uh, this, Roger was the guy many, many, many years ago, I don't know if I got enough many in there, um, who convinced John to go to OCS back in the day. So, sir, thank you for doing that. That's, that's what I call talent management, figuring it out way back then. So, um, like I said, great day. There's a lot really to celebrate. I know the retirements sometimes are, are bittersweet. And I'd like to start off today with something a little controversial. I was gonna do that, and of course, then we had the skull chant. And that's a comment from Colonel Retired Don Kerr. Where are you at, Don? You out there? Who's back there today? And Don said, General Jensen is a real Midwestern servant leader. And it's not enough for him to represent a single Midwest state. A native of Iowa, proud transplant to Minnesota, yet lifelong Nebraska Cornhuskers fan. He still finds time to attend a couple of games every year. So um, I'll admit, John, as an Iowan myself, I don't know how anybody can end up rooting for the Cornhuskers. So, and I know there are several other Cornhusker fans in the audience today. Brian and Christine Oze are out here. Um, but I want to go back to Don's comments. And everyone who knows John agrees with the servant leader part. John, you have done so much to serve Iowa, Minnesota, and our nation these past 42 years. And I'm glad that you asked me to host this ceremony. I'm proud to be here to celebrate your phenomenal career and your service to our Army and our nation. And at the same time, we all know anybody, all of us who've served in the military know you don't get to this day by yourself. There's a slew of people in the front row, and I know throughout the audience and across the Midwest who have given you, John, critical support through the years. And I'm going to start with Cindy, who's sitting right there to John's right, who's been a stalwart supporter of her soldier since she and John met in 1988. Cindy's a retired educator, a dedicated Army spouse, and an incredible mother to three great Jensen kids. And to Sully, <laughs> who she and John claim is the best dog in the world. And Ivy and I can attest from our time on Fort McNair that Sully is a phenomenal neighborhood dog and buddy. And I understand also an astute judge of character. Apparently several years ago, he nipped at a foreign dignitary who was later revealed to be a Russian sympathizer and fired because of it. <laughs> so Sully knows best, I guess. And clearly, Cindy, you have imbued Sully with some patriotic values. So thank you for that. So Cindy and John are celebrating 32 years of mar marriage later this month. which is an incredible accomplishment. And I know that John will probably buy you some crab legs from the wharf or something else that's expensive over there, but he'll have a whole bunch of time here with you uh, shortly. Cindy and John have raised three impressive kids, two of which are here today with us. Their son, Jake, who's a product manager at a precision metal manufacturing company in Minnesota. 
and their daughter, Atley, who I know Patty and I know well, and Ivy, who lives here in D.C. and owns her own dog training company. And maybe that's where Sully got some of his discerning taste as well. And unfortunately, their daughter, Keely, couldn't be here, but she has a pretty good excuse. Today is her first day of medical school back in Iowa. And I got, a, I got a special task. I'm looking at the Surgeon General, and I know, um, John, we got some work to do to convince Keeley to become an Army doc, but I'm hoping once that first tuition check comes due in December <laughs> that she may think about us a little bit more. So, um, and I know uh, for all your kids, your three kids, you guys are extremely proud of them. Also, here's John's mom, Diane who's been, I just found out this morning, every promotion um, since major. And uh, I'm going to break with a little bit. I know this wasn't part of it. Maybe offer her the mic. <laughs> that was the only thing he told me when I met with him beforehand, as long as you don't let my mom, don't, I'm not even worried about my fraternity brothers. So don't let my mom get up here. But I appreciate, ma'am, appreciate you making the trek all the way out uh, from Iowa. I know there's no simple way to get to D.C. from Council Bluffs, having been out that way. Um, John's dad, Roger, couldn't make it, but Roger has been a role model for John his whole life. He also served in the Iowa Army National Guard in 1st Battalion, 194th Field Artillery, the Vice's old unit. Um, small world. And I know there's a team of other family members here as well, quite a few. Uh, of whom are from Papillon, Papillion. In the, in the Midwest, we pronounce things just how they're written, so. <laughs> Which is just across the border from Council Bluffs. John's sister, Beth, is here. Hello, Beth. John's brother, Jim, and his wife, Brenda, right here in the second row. Cindy's sister, Kathy, and her husband, Mike, also from Nebraska. That's why when I walked by and said, who's from Iowa, I didn't get a very warm reception over there. <laughs> and Cindy's brother, Jeff, from Kansas City, Missouri. And I know there's several nieces and nephews from all over the country. And then I also know there's some fraternity brothers here from Northwest Missouri State. Where are those guys at? I want to talk to you guys afterwards, right there. <laughs> all right, I know you got some stories. So uh, all of you, even the Cornhusker fans, thank you for being here. Um, I like to say the Army is a team sport, and I know every one of you contributed to John and Cindy's success and journey um, throughout their many years in the Army. Um, John has had an incredible career. I think everybody knows that. He enlisted in the Iowa National Guard right out of high school in 1982 as a medic. He later attended Northwest Missouri State University and commissioned from OCS in 1989 as an infantry officer. He has led infantry units at every level in the Iowa and Minnesota Guard from platoon leader to division commander and deployed four times to Kuwait and, to Kuwait and supported Desert Spring to Bosnia and twice to Iraq as part of OIF. In 2017, he was selected to serve as the Adjutant General of Minnesota and since August of 2020, John has served as the 22nd Director of the Army National Guard. If you think back through recent history, you'll get a sense of some of the challenges that John has faced. He was a Minnesota tag during the violence in, Min in Minneapolis following the murder of George Floyd. The Minnesota Guard was responsible for supporting law enforcement agencies across the Twin Cities and the state and navigated some truly difficult situations. Then he arrived in D.C. in the throes of COVID an unprecedented time really for the whole Army, but maybe especially for our National Guard leaders who had to navigate policies and directions from both the state and federal levels. And then less than six months into the director job, had to work through some critical decisions following January 6th. So John, there's probably shivers going, John, thinking about all those things. But John, through it all, you've maintained a steady hand, kept a vision, and stayed committed to your teams. And that's a real achievement. In the Army, we are trained to face ambiguity and chaos downrange, but it's another thing altogether to navigate those things here at home. John, you have done that with wisdom, grace, and amazing skill. If I had to sum you up in three, with three things, I would start with the fact that you are an excellent team builder. You know and care about everyone on your team 
from the E5 team leaders where good leadership starts to your general officers. You are calm, second, you are calm and unflappable in the face of any challenge. I know I've really appreciated this and it has helped you make good, sound, and timely decisions for the Army National Guard in some really, really tough times. And finally, you are a critical thinker and you understand how your decisions affect the lives and relationships on multiple levels, and that is a special talent. As we all move up in the Army, the problems get more and more complex, and it's easy to forget how our decisions affect the soldiers in the foxhole. You have always kept yourself grounded. I think the current tag, Major General Steve Osborne, I just got to see up in Minnesota, uh, sums it up well. Lieutenant General Jensen is simply a man of character and integrity who cares deeply for soldiers, their families, and how decisions and policies impact them. He is a down-to-earth and common-sense leader. And I know that's something back where we come from, John, that everybody wants to hear, and you've lived that these last four decades. So to you and Cindy, congratulations to you both. I know you're headed out to Apple Valley Minnesota, which is a very beautiful part of the country, and less than six hours to Des Moines, and Count, Des Moines and Council Bluffs, and in Midwest time, I know those are, you can make those drives and go see mom um, as often as she wants you to. Um, and I'm sure you're gonna enjoy having more time to spend with your family and traveling. And John, I understand you have a solo motorcycle trip planned around Lake Superior in September and we will expect you to send pictures, and I will tell you from being from that part, don't dally. I think uh, you've got just a couple of days to get that trip in around in that part of the country. But I wanna thank you for all that you have done and Cindy um, have done for our Army, um, for our soldiers uh, and their families over these past four decades, um, all the sacrifice that you have done. Um, you have made us better and especially in these last four years when you've been the director of the Army National Guard. So on behalf of the entire Army, thank you for all that you've done. We wish you nothing but the best um, in your next adventures. Stay in touch. Thank you. Would Mrs. Jensen join General George and Lieutenant General Jensen in front of the flags? A certificate of retirement from the Armed Forces of the United States of America is now being presented to Lieutenant General Jensen. The certificate reads, this is to certify that Lieutenant General John A. Jensen, having served faithfully and honorably, is retired from the United States Army. Signed, Randy A. George, Chief of Staff of the Army. Lieutenant General Jensen is being presented with a Minuteman Statue Level 3. The citation reads, Lieutenant General John Jensen distinguished himself through over 35 years of, the, of exceptionally meritorious service, serving in various capacities and culminating a distinguished career as the 22nd Director of the Army National Guard. Lieutenant General John Jensen's steadfast advocacy Strategic leadership and unwavering commitment ensured the Army National Guard always stood ready to serve local communities and the nation during the most unprecedented times of global war and pandemic, periods of civil unrest and natural disasters. His dynamic leadership, professionalism, and commitment to the Army National Guard ensured excellence was woven into the fabric of the organization from the individual, unit, state, and national levels. Lieutenant General Jensen's integration into Army senior leader priorities was critical in synchronizing the organization's priorities and facilitating actionable solutions as a total Army partner that proved critical in advancing the Army National Guard's abilities to meet and exceed the increasing demands at both state and national levels. Lieutenant General Jensen's unwavering support and service to the Army National Guard is in keeping with the finest traditions of military service and reflects great credit upon himself, the Army National Guard, 
and the United States Army. A tri-star note signed by the Secretary of the Army, Chief of Staff of the Army, and the Sergeant Major of the Army is being presented to Lieutenant General Jensen. <laughs> A certificate of appreciation is now being presented to Mrs. Jensen. The certificate reads, this is to certify that Cindy Jensen, on the occasion of the retirement of your spouse from the United States Army, has earned grateful appreciation for your own unselfish, faithful, and devoted service. Your unfailing support and understanding helped to make possible your spouse's lasting contribution to the nation. Signed, Randy A. George, Chief of Staff of the Army. Thank you, General George and Mrs. Jensen. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant General John A. Jensen, United States Army, retired. Thank, thank you, please, please. No, thank you very much. Thank you. Please. I, uh, first of all, you know, everybody's uh, presence here today really honors my family. So it, it means the world to us. And, and, and as payment, I, I give you all three things today. One, the skull chant. <laughs> you know, the great thing about the Army is the vice really disciplines general officers. So I knew I was okay, Chief. I knew there, nothing could really happen to me. The second one is, and I, and I really thank uh, uh, the, the, the Army protocol team here, is like normally when, when somebody retires here, in lieu of, like here we have the Army Guard symbol, it's, it's their headshot. You know, so you're welcome that you didn't have to stare at my headshot for <laughs> 20 minutes. And it's kind of intimidating too. It's almost like your teacher's looking over your left shoulder, you know, critiquing what you're uh, 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 about to about to say, and to the great HQDA staff that I just have absolutely loved, I got you out of Monday morning battle rhythm, right? And so it's not quite like missing the uh, Army sync meeting, but at least I got you out of the HQDA principal sync. So those are my gifts uh, to you all. Uh, now, speaking of gifts, there's uh, one thing that I have to do uh, first off here because it's exceptionally important that I don't forget it, and that is uh, to honor the two most in uh, important people in my life. Uh, first, uh, my wife of 32 years, uh, Cindy, and my mother, uh, uh, Diane Jensen, as well. So we're going to present uh, both of them flowers. It is a true story. I told the chief this last night. I, as mentioned, I have some fraternity brothers in town, and again, every time you see them, you swear them to secrecy, right? No stories. I didn't realize I had to swear my mother to secrecy, too. <laughs> Now that I know, but uh, if you bear with us just one second, let's, let, let's do this real quick. Okay, that, I can go home with Cindy not only tonight, but when we move back to Minnesota as well. <laughs> uh, big thank you. Uh, the National Guard Bureau, Army Guard Protocol, uh, you've been incredibly uh, supportive. And, you know, we had General Hokinson last week, multiple events there, uh, and then uh, supporting me, the Headquarters Department of the Army uh, Protocol team, just you guys are just uh, fantastic. Uh, just made everything so easy to, uh, to work through. So I really appreciate your commitment and your, your attention to detail. The U.S. Army Band Pershing Zone, uh, 
if there was one thing I wanted in the ceremony I couldn't get, and that was to have them play Lawyers, Guns, and Money by, uh, by Warren Zevon. So maybe, maybe, Chief, if you recall me, that's my condition. We got to get the band to play that song. Uh, the Old Guard, uh, who, you know, we, we, we did a, a wreath laying this morning, and the Sentinels and the Tomb Guards over there is part of the Old Guard. Just a very, very special morning. So we'd like to thank them and that team for everything that they do every day uh, around the clock to, to honor our, our unknowns, yeah. <laughs> to the Chief and Patty George, uh, you have been so flexible and accommodating. I really appreciate it, Chief. Thank you very much for that. Um, you know, if private E1, John Jensen, in November of 1992 would have been told that 41 plus years later he would uh, retire and the Chief of Staff of the Army would officiate his retirement ceremony and the Chief of Staff of the Army would be from Iowa. I, of course, would have said, what's the Chief of Staff of the Army, right? <laughs> uh, but to look back, you know, all those years now, uh, you know, uh, when I came in and where we are today. Thanks, thanks again, Chief. You, you really honor my family and I for that. And uh, General Dan and Kelly Hokinson, uh, our 29th Chief of the National Guard Bureau, who uh, retired last week and is busy at, at, at home putting, putting his household goods together as they uh, relocate. Uh, we're going to see him uh, later today as we we have a, another ceremony later today that we'll talk about in a, in a, in a little bit. And uh, so, you know, this has been a very difficult speech to write, I'll, I'll tell you. Uh, you know, many times these last couple of weeks, I'd, I'd tell Cindy, ah, I think I'm going to go upstairs and write my retirement speech. And, you know, next day, I think I'm going to go upstairs and write my retirement speech. And after about five or six times, she's like, are you just doing this to get away from me? Are you really, are you actually writing something? I'm like, hell, I don't, I don't know. But, you know, I wanted to have something more than just a list of people, right? You know, here's the, here's the you know, 8,000 people that contributed to my career. And so we'll do it maybe just a little bit different. We'll go chronological order of how people entered, entered my life and made all of this uh, possible. Of course, my, mo my mother, which we we now know has all of the, the dirt on me. My dad unable to travel because somebody had to water, or somebody had to monitor the water level in the lawn, make sure that uh, it was properly watered this week, and maybe have to call the lawn mowing guy and say, you need to show up a day early. So dad's back home taking care of that as, as he should. Uh, my oldest brother, Jay, a US uh, Air Force uh, veteran, isn't with us today, but uh, my, my just sincere appreciation to him. I could never beat him up, so I learned how to out-talk him. And so I think that's been part of my success. I could uh, out-talk people maybe. Uh, my sister Beth, who, who is here, who has committed her life to the medical profession and has just given back to so many people at so many different levels during her medical career. And then Jim and, and his wonderful wife Brenda, both of them uh, Air Force uh, veterans as well. And so, you know, we all know this. Nobody knows you better than your siblings because they really know you. I mean, you can, you can lie to your mom and dad, but you can't lie to your siblings. And so they have been nothing but, uh, but the most supportive siblings through this 40-some years of, 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 of career, uh, even the two Air Force guys. Uh, I, I, remember, I remember when I, oh, no, I'm not gonna say that. I was gonna say, if my bro, I'll just say it. Uh, I'm, I'm almost retired, you know. So when I got commissioned, my oldest brother, Jay, looked at my dad and said, hey, what's it like having a second daughter? And, uh, <laughs> That's what I've had to live with because I was always outnumbered two to one, right? And uh, so, you know, we were all kind of NCOs together. And when I left being an NCO, I, I was no, part, no longer part of the cool club uh, at, at all. Uh, uh, six tremendous uh, fraternity brothers have, have joined me uh, this weekend and really represent uh, just a tremendous uh, influence on my life. Forty-some years ago, uh, I got a, I was handed a card that said, Phi Sig will make me a better man. And uh, it's true. Um, the men of 940 College Avenue have influenced my life and my family in, in many, many ways, you know, uh, beyond anything that I, you know, ever really 
thought. You know, I was one of those guys that after about two weeks of college realized that the coolest gig a guy could get in 1982 was being a college student. All I had to do was stay academically eligible and somehow be able to finance uh, school. I marginally did the first, and the only reason why I was able to do the second was because I made a decision along with two other friends to join the Iowa Army National Guard. Now, I always say I did it for purely patriotic reasons. I needed the college money. And so, yes, there is hope with my daughter that may be uh, here soon. And so in, in November of 1982, I was enlisted as a combat medic in HHC 1st Battalion, 168th uh, Infantry, who, interesting enough, three, three former battalion commanders uh, of that uh, great battalion there. Steve Osborne, who was, uh, who's the current Adjutant General of Iowa, is here today. Matt Murphy. Uh, if you ever hear me tell a story, and my story starts with this, the best battalion commander I ever served with, and then I will tell the story, it's always about Matt Murphy. He, without a doubt, was the best battalion commander I ever served with. And then this guy named Roger Schultz, who was the battalion commander when I was E1, PV1, John Jensen, Lieutenant Colonel Roger Schultz, uh, who later was my brigade commander when I was a, a lieutenant and a company commander, and who later became the director of the Army Guard, uh, 1998 to 2005, I believe, uh, was literally has been with me from my, my first day as a, as a soldier. And when I became the director out here was, was somebody that not only did I know I could call, but I called, uh, as I had many times in my career. And I, I would bring him over for lunch, and we'd just sit, and I, we'd just talk. And he'd, he'd tell me, and he, 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 he doesn't give you advice. He just talks to you. And then, and then he leaves, and you know what you're supposed to do. And so uh, we're going to take a photograph here in a little bit, uh, sir, and I'm just incredibly proud. So I joined this battalion, 168th Infantry, proud, proud infantry uh, battalion, uh, fought in the Spanish-American War in the Philippines, southwest border, chasing Pancho Villa, uh, mobilized, deployed as World War I, but they, they actually fought with the 42nd, uh, Rainbow Division under General MacArthur when they brought uh, guard regiments from throughout the nation to, to, to unite the United States because we weren't that far past the Civil War. So in a way to unify the Army uh, regiments from throughout the country, uh, John Andoni from that proud division is here today. Uh, and then as part of the 34th Infantry Division had more days of combat than any other div division was the base of the United States uh, uh, Army Rangers in World War II. Captain Darby came from uh, came to that division and brought many of his NCOs and soldiers to, to be a part of that. Uh, and so that's where I learned how to be a soldier, that's where I learned how to be an NCO, and that's where I learned to be a company grade officer. And the truth of the story is General Schultz didn't really convince me to go, go to OCS. Um, he wanted me to be a recruiter, and I knew that was probably the dumbest idea for John Jensen in the world, and I was just looking for a way to get out of becoming a recruiter. And I remember telling him, I was like, sir, I know how this is going to work, right? I'm not going to be very successful. You know, the organization's going to get mad at me, and at some point they're going to fire me, and then I'm going to hate the guard, and I don't want to hate the guard. I like the guard, so I can't be a recruiter. And without Blinken and I, he said, great, we're going to send you to OCS then, right, John? I was like, oh, all right, sir, yeah, okay. I was like, anything to get out of this. Uh, never wanted to be an officer, and I uh, was commissioned in 1989, and here I am today, all because I didn't want to be an Army recruiter, so sometimes uh, it works out just, just fine. But during that career, Staff Sergeant John Jensen met and fell in love with, uh, with Cindy Schmid from Papillion, Nebraska, who, interesting enough, her father was an Air Force veteran, too, and he, he didn't like me originally either, but uh, we worked through that. Uh, but his dad, Al, and, and uh, her just beautiful mother, uh, Dottie, were just always, always supportive of, of what we were doing. And uh, 
uh, her oldest brother Jeff, her sister Kathy, and her youngest brother Rob and their families just are, remain such a big part of, of our family. And Jeff and Kathy are, are, are out here this weekend, and we really, really appreciate that. But Cindy and I got married. I just had gotten promoted to first lieutenant. So she started dating a staff sergeant and married a first lieutenant. That's about the time when my future father-in-law started liking me, was about that point. <laughs> Uh, and then we had three beautiful children. Uh, you know, again, another father-in-law story. Uh, Jake came nine months and one day after we were married. And I always said, God bless that one day. <laughs> uh, and then uh, Atlee and Keeley, who just are just so beautiful. And we are, we are just so blessed with those three kids. Uh, because I'll tell you, they are um, most importantly, you know, uh, us kids, uh, my siblings and I, uh, the way that my mom and dad raised, raised us was the golden rule, it's the golden rule. You got treated the way you treated other people. And if you were a good kid, you got treated like a good kid. If, if you were something less than a good kid, you got treated something less than that. My kids are the same way, they're good people, and they treat people well. And, and I think that's really, really important and probably misunderstood in today's society um, that you, you, you get what you give. Um, and so they, they are givers. During that time, shortly after Keeley was born, uh, I, I got sent down to Command General Staff College and there was this crazy guy, uh, I, I will, he would not disagree with uh, how I'm gonna describe him. This hairy Italian guy who claims to have been born underneath the Brooklyn Bridge was in my seminar. And he came down there to do two things, right? Number one was to go to the School of Advanced Military Studies. Number two was to recruit the best group of scotch drinkers he could. So he could, his second year at Leavenworth, he had people he could hang out with. Uh, Tony DiMartino is his name. Many of you uh, know him. He's still uh, in the area uh, here. Tony has been a, a, a dear friend uh, since 2000 and really changed my life. I wasn't that interested in going to Sam's, I was really interested in hanging out with him for another year and drinking scotch. And so uh, I, was, uh, I, was apply I applied and uh, General Schultz at the time was the director, fully supported that and I, that decision, Tony's influence and that decision really changed my career. Uh, because up at that point I knew, I could, I could tell you every desk I was gonna sit at and every person I was gonna work with in the Iowa Guard. I mean, that's just the way it is. It's a small organization. And you, you saw the people in front of you, and you're like, I'm gonna go from here to here to here to here. I'm gonna work for this person, work for that person. Uh, and it, it, not that that's bad, but it was just something that I wanted something a little bit different. And because of my selection to Sam's, and, and uh, you know, I had to go do um, my utilization tour at, at a division, and of course, the 34th Infantry Division in Minnesota, our parent division, I, I went, and there, uh, he was mentioned earlier today, my first boss, Don Kerr, who was the Division G3, as I came in as the Division Chief of Plans, back, you know, when it was hard being a, a Chief of Plans of the Division, because you were a Major, not a Lieutenant Colonel, right? And uh, Don was my first boss there, and uh, just treated me exceptionally well, worked for him uh, multiple times, but it was my first exposure to general officers, right? My entire career up to that point had been at the battalion level and below. And general officers were something you tried to avoid, not somebody you tried to engage. Uh, and suddenly I'm at the division headquarters, I'm the chief of plans and I'm talking to general officers. Uh, and we had some great ones there. Uh, Rick Erlinson, Jerry Lang, Dave Elisario, Neil Lloydolt, and then a guy that uh, really influenced my life uh, and career a lot, Rick Nash, who I was his chief of plans uh, when we went to Bosnia. I was his G3 when we went to Iraq. I was his chief of staff when he was the adjutant general. And then I replaced him as the adjutant general. And I remember one time he wrote on my uh, OER as the, as the senior raider, you know, future director of the Army Guard. And, and I just remember laughing inside, going, yeah, there's no way I'm ever gonna be the director of the Army Guard. But because of that decision and because of that movement, I got the opportunity to command a great battalion, a great brigade, had division command, and become an adjutant general. And so our adjutant generals that are here today, um, first, I being an adjutant general with you, and then later working with you as the director, uh, I just, it's just amazing. 
It's just amazing what we ask you to do and what you do. Some of you, in addition to being responsible for the readiness of your Army Force and your Air Force in your state, also run your Veterans Affairs Department. Some of you uh, also run the Emergency Management Department of your state, and some of you do all three of those jobs. It, it, is, a, it is a very unique, only to the American military uh, position that, quite frankly, can't be understood unless you do it. I was Rick Nash's chief of staff for six and a half years. I thought I knew what being an adjutant general was. I was literally you know, within bayonet distance of his office for six and a half years. I didn't know what it was until I became a tag. And then great adjutant generals like Jim Hoyer, uh, who's here today, uh, you know, mentored me, coached me, helped me become successful and understand what our job uh, is there. And then I was uh, somehow, uh, I'll tell you at first, I wouldn't tell you blessed to be picked as the director of the Army Guard. Uh, I, was, I was kind of, uh, well, Joe Langell was the chief of the National Guard Bureau, and one day in a meeting, he purposely made eye contact with me and gave me the old, you know, head nod, and out in the hallway I was with him, and, and uh, he, you know, he, he played to, I have, I have several weaknesses, but one of them is truly Catholic guilt weakness, and he played to my Catholic guilt. Hey, John, I, I heard you were going to apply to be the director, and I was like, oh, no, chief, those words have never crossed my lips ever. I don't know what your intel, who's giving you your intel, but they're wrong. And he just shook his head and kind of put his eyes down a little bit, said, I'm disappointed. And I was like, oh, no, you can't play the disappointment card. But he did, and I applied, and, and uh, because of uh, General McConville and Secretary McCarthy, uh, I ended up getting the job. And, and I'll talk more about that later today, uh, and, and because later today, we get to bring in uh, my replacement, the great John Stubbs from Arkansas here, and honor him and his family, Jane's with him here today. And I, I am so looking forward to that, uh, to honor you, John, and what you're gonna do uh, next. Hey, to the HQDA team, uh, Das, you and Walt Pyatt before me, um, one, of, one of my biggest honors, I will tell you, is being able to serve on that staff and work that and support, uh, support the Army. The best Army is when all three compos are the healthiest, right? It's not compo one versus compo two, compo two versus compo three or anything that, it's when the whole Army is, is together working uh, the same direction. And I had four years of that as the director, first under General McConville, now under uh, General George, uh, under Walt Pyatt, now Laura Potter. Uh, that We all go to, to work every single day trying to get to that. Uh, and there are a thousand challenges out there, a million challenges, you can't knock them all down. And it's all, uh, uh, about risk, where are you taking risk, where are you assuming risk, those type of things. But it's just been, Das, it's been a pleasure uh, being on your staff, being on Walt's staff. Uh, Jody Daniels, who we just uh, retired as the chief of uh, the Army Reserve last week, was, a, was another, another great teammate. And so, lastly, I'll tell you this. Um, you know, it's not lost on me that I, I am, I've been very, very lucky. Uh, to, to be here, to stand here today and have an event like this, you know, to, to achieve retirement, have the Chief of Staff of the Army um, officiate your retirement ceremony, it's because it's not lost on me, right? That whether through the actions of the enemy, a tragic accident or an illness, not everybody who deserves this gets here like I have today. And, um, when you reflect back on that and those people that we've all lost along the way, who were better than us, smarter than us, more talented than us, but for whatever reason, don't get this opportunity. I just, again, wanna say that you, you honor my family today by being here, and I, I deeply appreciate that. So, today and going forward, this will defend. Always ready, always there. Attack, attack, attack. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the singing of the Army Song, led by Sergeant First Class Sorensen. The words to the Army Song will be displayed on the screen. March along, sing our song with the army of the free. Count the brave, count the true, who have fought to victory. We're the army and proud of our name. We're the army and proudly proclaim. First to fight for the right, and to build the nation's might, and the army goes rolling along. Proud of all we have done, fighting till the battle's won, and the army goes rolling along. Then it's high, high, hey, the army's on its way. Count off the cadence loud and strong, for where we go, know that the army goes rolling along. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. We invite guests to congratulate Lieutenant General and Mrs. Jensen in front of the flags. Thank you for attending and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.